wrap up these intro videos by talking about module zero. It's getting started in Art 1200. It has absolutely nothing to do with InDesign itself, and it's all about how you can be successful in Art 1200 InDesign software as a course. It talks about the expectations of you in the course as a whole throughout the semester, and specifically about what you're expected to do this week. So I'm gonna go through it, and I'm gonna go through it in, in detail, but I'm not going to go through it with a fine tooth comb. I expect that after you watch this video, you will read reread through everything in detail. The first thing, and I know I've said this in a couple of videos, is that it should take between two and four hours to complete. If you are very, very, very thorough, it should take two hours. If you're doing it kind of and multitasking and watching TV and search, searching the internet and things like that, it might take you four hours. But if you were the most thorough person going through it, it should only take about two hours. There's a numbered list here that outlines some important things about the course. I am going to read through that because they are very important things. The first is that the course content has been divided into 13 modules. They're numbered 00 through 12, and you will have between one and two weeks from start to finish to complete each module. I like to keep things kind of like a neat orderly list. So we'll always start modules on Monday morning and we'll always end modules on Saturday unless the college is closed. So during the fall semester, you have fall break and spring break. So the due dates of whatever module we're working on will be on a Wednesday, but I'll accept it late through Saturday without late penalty so that you have the full two weeks to work on it if you wanted to. Every module contains at least one lecture topic. Some have two or three lectures included. You'll have longer, a longer amount of time to work on those if, you, if there's multiple lectures. In addition, modules also include a project that relating to the topic, a vocabulary quiz, a discussion, and a critique activity. But you only have critique activities if it's a module after a module that had a project. So in a previous video, I showed you module one. It didn't have a critique activity because we don't have anything to critique yet. So when we get to module three, it'll start the critique activities. There's a 15 minute time limit on all vocabulary quizzes, and there's up to 10 questions on a vocab vocabulary quiz. If you have completed the lecture and taken notes, the quizzes are meant to be easy. They're meant to pull out key information. Um, so don't stress too much about those quizzes. You can submit all of your work late until the very last day of the semester, but any work that's submitted either one minute late or one week late or one month late will be docked 10% for being late. When we start working on critiques, your critiques will have two submissions that are due. So the initial post where you post your own work will be due on Wednesday night, and then you'll have until Saturday night to uh, submit the peer reviews that are associated with critique activities. You cannot submit the midterm exam late. That is the only thing that you cannot submit late. We do not have a final exam in Art 1200. You will have a midterm exam that's more like an early final. So we won't have a midterm on week eight and a final on week 16 instead around week 13. I can't remember exactly, but you know what? We can look it up on the schedule page. Our midterm exam is module nine and it will be week 13. So at 8 a.m. on November 11th, the exam will unlock and you'll have until 11.59 p.m. on November 16th to finish and submit it. Um, all of your work is due on Saturday nights unless otherwise specified, and the only two exceptions to that are the initial critique post, and then the weeks that we have fall break and Thanksgiving break, I will post that your work is due on Wednesday night, but you'll actually have until Saturday to submit it. I just can't make anything due on a day the college is uh, closed for a holiday. I highly recommend printing the semester schedule at a glance. We'll follow it to a T. It lists everything we're going to do this semester. And then last, uh, but certainly not least, the coursework in Art 1200 is cumulative. For example, Module 8 may require the use of skills that were learned during Module 3. So it's important that you complete the coursework in the order listed. Um, you need to make sure that you don't fall too far behind. If we're working on Module 7, you may learn three or four new things to create a table, but you're going to have to use the things that you learned in Modules 1, 2, and 3 to complete those activities. And so if you start skipping around on the course content, it's going to make it more difficult to complete the coursework. Once you have an understanding of kind of those bullet points, there are certain things I would like you to do 
to participate in. I'm going to open all of these in new tabs so I can show you pretty quickly. There's a Getting Started in Art 1200 page. You can see that it's here. It has all the information that I've been talking about in these videos. So you can just skim through that because I've gone through it in complete detail. This is an online course, and I think a lot of the times uh, students who take online courses, they don't have a full grasp of what they could be. So online classes can be anything. There's lots of different types of online classes. There's lots of different methods that teachers can use to present online classes. And people tend to pigeonhole what their idea of an online class is. And when the online class is not to their expectation, it's confusing or it's frustrating. And so I would like you to print the Netiquette Guide for Online Courses and read through it. It has what I like to call duh statements. So, so it says like, when you email your teacher, put your name and your course and your section number. Uh, make sure that you are, you know, spelling words out instead of putting uh, you, put Y-O-U if you're, if you're using the word you. Um, this is a good Netiquette Guide for all of your classes, not just your online classes, but um, they're best practices to help you get the results that you're looking for, right? If you email somebody and they can't understand the question that you're asking, you're not gonna get the answer to the question you were expecting to receive. There is also a uh, online student manual for success. If you think that you're gonna take lots of online classes, this is a great thing to read through, but it's really long. And so I recommend at least reading through the common mistakes to avoid as a new online student, the learning styles and why they matter and how to find what your learning style is, managing your time effectively during an online class. This could probably be the number one thing that students um, get frustrated with with themselves when they take an online class. Online students, I think, I think it's harder to take an online class than an on-campus class. In an on-campus class, your teacher's there, they're in front of you. You can't show up to class without your coursework. Um, the teacher's gonna ask you questions and keep you engaged in the course. When you take an online class, you have to keep yourself engaged. You have to keep yourself on pace to finish by the end of the semester. And so there are some tips for managing your time effectively. And then there is another section that says the 10 golden rules of proper netiquette. It's similar to the worksheet that I want you to print out. There's a setting realistic expectations um, page. This to me is also super important, so spend some time reading through this. I have expectations of you as a student in my class and they're listed here. I'm not gonna read through all of them, I'll just kind of skim it. But you'll log into the course at least three times per week. Plan on logging in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, you will read my weekly course announcement. I send an announcement through the announcements tab at approximately 8 a.m. every single Monday. And I expect you to read it. It explains what we're gonna work on, what are the expectations. I will even go into detail about certain things you should pay attention to more than others, or this is super tricky this week, make sure that you focus on X, Y, and Z. And it takes me like 45 minutes to type those announcements up. I would like you to read it. I think it puts you on a good foot for being successful in the course. You can kind of skim through it. Um, but. Down here, I highlighted this one in yellow. Students will submit their work on time by the posted due date and take responsibility for any late work. Late work is only docked 10% for being late. Being an adult means getting your work in on time. If you don't get it in on time, take responsibility and take the 10% deduction. I allow you to submit late work until the very last day of the semester and I only take 10% off. This is a very generous late policy. Do not email me and ask me how you can submit your work late without being deducted 10%. If you didn't get it in on time, it gets docked 10% for being late. Take responsibility for your actions. I know things come up. I know that, you know, your car breaks down and you forget and you don't log in for a few days, but I can see everywhere you've clicked in the class. If you don't log in from Monday until Friday, and then you log in on Saturday at six o'clock at night, and then I get an email from you that says, I did everything I could to get my work in on time. I can see that you didn't do anything for the first five days of the week. Don't beg me to save you 10% on your project because you didn't get it in on time. Just take the 10% deduction and move on. Um, because I have expectations as you, as a student in my class, I've also set expectations for myself. I try to set them kind of from a student's perspective. And so I'll also log in at least three times per week. I log in every single day, but I'll log in at least three times per week. 
I will uh, compose and send a personalized course announcement so that you can read that every week. I will respond to messages sent via the Canvas inbox within 24 hours, or I'll do my best to respond to them within 24 hours. I will schedule at least five um, office hours each week, and I will host both online and on-campus office hours. Um, I will grade all activities in a timely manner. Timely manner is kind of, it's up for interpretation. Somebody who has everything in their course set to auto grade and they just have to hit submit and post grades is going to be able to score your work within 24 hours. But we're in an artistic class where I have to download files and I have to check. Every project has a 25 point checklist. I have to check 25 things. I have to write personalized feedback on them. It's going to take me a little bit longer to grade projects than it would to grade quizzes. And so quizzes and discussions should be graded within seven days. I'll try to do, I'll try to grade them much faster, but projects might take me up to 14 days. That's calendar days, not business days. So two weeks to grade a project. I have also linked resources for help. We've already talked about this page. So I'm not gonna talk about it again and the syllabus page. There's a course material. So I know this is a long video, so I'm already down here, course materials, text and software. The course materials text and software page explains everything you need for the course and more importantly explains how to get it for free so you need adobe software you can pay twenty dollars a month as a student or you can use slcc all access or you can use any visual art and design computer lab it talks about the oer initiative for the course and how uh, there is no required textbook you can get the software for free and you can even do printing for free you're going to have to physically print your projects in art 1200 but you can print for free if you come to our labs on campus. We've also talked about the semester schedule at a glance page and the last activity in the required activities for module 00 is what is Adobe InDesign. It is a video that just talks about what InDesign is from Adobe. I'm Adobe not going to play it for copyright reasons, but you can go to Adobe's website and you can watch that video. Once you're done all of the required activities, there are five um, activities that you have to submit that will count towards your grade. The first is an initial response. I just want you to respond and say, I feel comfortable with the navigation structure of the class, or I don't and I'm confused and I have the following questions. So your option is, I feel comfortable, I'm good to go, thumbs up, or I'm not okay and I have questions. You can't just say, I don't understand. Ask specific questions and I will check this multiple times every day for the first two weeks of the semester so I can give you a very quick response to help you get started in the course. I would like you to upload a profile picture. You don't have to submit anything for that. You'll go into your profile over here and you'll click on your little icon and upload a profile picture. The picture should be of you. It should be only you. It should be close up so I can see you. See how small this picture is? If you're, if you're like surfing on a wave in the distance, I can't see you. It helps me recognize faces in online classes don't post a cartoon. It's only worth five points and it's worth basically nothing towards your grade in the greater scheme of things. So if you don't want to upload a profile picture, you don't have to. But if you do, please make sure that it looks like you and that I can see if I bump into you on campus, I can say, hey, you're in my online InDesign class. There's a discussion. Um, introduce yourself to the class activity. The goal of this activity is to talk a little bit about yourself, to meet your, your fellow classmates. But more importantly, it is to practice using discussion boards because you're going to use discussion boards throughout the semester. And so I recommend trying to embed a photo, follow the instructions on the announcements tab for using Google Drive, and it will explain to you how to post your artwork and to submit um, or to post or embed your artwork in a discussion. There is a syllabus quiz, you get unlimited attempts. So take the quiz. If you get two or three questions wrong, go and look those answers up in the syllabus. It asks questions that are specific to our class that are not meant to be difficult. They're just key things. Like what textbook is required for this course? We don't have a textbook, right? We're OER, so there's no textbook required for this course. Uh, which course category requires the most weight? Which, which, which one is going to affect your grade the most? If you go to the syllabus, it will tell you that skills-based assignments are worth 50% of your grade. That's important to know, so it's a question on the quiz. There's only a handful of questions, so make sure that you're reading through the course syllabus. And then last but not least, I want you to make sure that you can log into the Creative Cloud 
and have access to InDesign if you're doing this at home, or you can get to a computer lab on campus and you have access to InDesign at SLCC. When you're done, take a picture of your screen showing that you've logged into Canvas or a picture of yourself in front of the computer. This is Julianne Law. She teaches our InDesign classes on campus. So if you decide that the online class seems a little bit overwhelming to you, you can switch into Julianne's class and take her class on campus if you'd like to. Okay, that wraps up everything that is required of you. I know these videos ended up being long and kind of arduous, but you should have an idea of everything you have to do in the first week of the semester and how to get started in ARC 1200. If you have any additional questions, feel free to message me through the Canvas inbox or leave a message in the chat and I'll check it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.